with ball pythons and that is that they don't climb. Actually, ball pythons can be very good climbers depending on their activity level. So today, I am here to show you the new enclosure that I built for Chip to provide lots of places to climb. So we're providing good environmental enrichment by providing different textures and smells, but we're also providing that stimulation for him to exercise and climb and explore. So it's not that his old enclosure was inappropriate, it was totally sufficient for proper husbandry, but we really want to go the extra mile and advance that husbandry. If you enjoy this video as much as I hope you will, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll see more builds like this. I also would love if you drop a comment to let me know what specifically you like about this build. Now let's get right into it. So when I'm planning an enclosure build, I like to sketch out a rough idea of what I'm doing. So I am basically drawing out my enclosure, which will be a four by two by four with a cabinet stand for the base and a deluxe stacking spacer on top to hide my lighting. So then I start drawing in some of the details of what I want. So I'm providing a four by two by four enclosure for our ball python chip because I want him to be able to climb, but I wanna also give him something besides just branches to climb on. So I'm trying to figure out where I would like to put um, some shelves in for him that I would then connect later with some branches. In Chip's previous enclosure, he had one corner cave. And in his new enclosure, I would like to give him a corner cave and a standard Zen cave. So this is just because I wanna make sure that he does have a nice warm hide in multiple areas of his enclosure so he can choose which one he wants to use. I really wanted it to look natural. So I went with the motif of like designing a 3D tree as long as having lots of vines and some live plants. So now that I finished my sketch and I made a pretty poorly done digital rendition, keep watching and let me know how I did. The first step in this build is to assemble my 4x2x4 PVC enclosure. For full assembly instructions, I've included a link in the description to this video of how to put them together. The next day it was time to install the shelves that I wanted. So I had to determine at what height I needed these shelves based on the UVB lighting I was providing for Chip. So he got adequate UVB absorption. So to get the shelves installed, I did lots and lots of measuring using a level and I used two shelf brackets per shelf. I just screwed them in with normal screw and nut on the back. And the other thing that I wanted to do with these shelves was to have substrate on them instead of them just being flat. So I am putting on some little strips of acrylic that will essentially make a basin on top of these shelves for me so that I can put in his mulch and other substrates. Great. The next element that I wanted to work on was creating my 3D tree in the corner. So I actually ended up putting it in the opposite corner than I originally planned just based on the way um, my shelves are with the measurements, etc. So to bulk up the trunk of the tree, I'm using these pieces of styrofoam and I'm just gluing them into the corner. That way I don't have to spray spray foam into that negative space and waste all that material. I can just spray this on top of this styrofoam just to bulk it out. 
So I was so excited to start my tree that I forgot a step. I forgot to put my bio basin in before I started gluing stuff into the corner. So here I am with my bio basin. I am going to install it. I had to remove some of the foam that I glued down to get the bio basin behind it, but it all worked out. Everything ended up being nice and sealed. Okay, great, the bio basin is in, I can start making my tree. So here I am, I am starting to pour, or spray, spray foam onto that styrofoam that I had glued into the corner, but I realized that the spray foam was so heavy, it was just drooping off of the styrofoam, so I had to turn the enclosure onto its back and let gravity help me. While I am waiting for my spray foam to dry, I decided to take this opportunity to silicone some moss over my shelf brackets to try to hide those. I gave the spray foam an opportunity to dry overnight and now it's time to put the details into the tree. So this is definitely the longest and most tedious part of this particular build. I'm going through and I'm taking a box cutter and smoothing out all of the roughness of the spray foam and then I'm going in and carving out some details like wood grain. So now that everything is carved the way that I want it to be, it's time to start sealing by siliconing over all of that spray foam and attaching the substrate, which will give it that texture of a tree that I'm trying to do. The silicone can be super, super stinky. So I'm doing this in a room away from our animals. I have a box fan venting out the top so that way um, it can help dry and dissipate some of those fumes. I'm wearing gloves and I'm also wearing a face mask because it really does burn your sinuses. One more little caveat about silicone. When you're using silicone in an enclosure build, it needs to be 100% silicone with no additives for mold resistance in order to be safe for our reptiles. So once I had a nice layer of silicone on everything, it was time to start putting on the substrate that I'm using as texture. So I'm using coconut core. I um, rehydrated six bricks of it a few days prior and let it dry out a little bit so it wasn't super moist when I was sticking it on. To remove any of the extra coconut core that did not get stuck to the silicone, I went to the back of the enclosure and I basically beat the back of it until all the dust fell off. <laughs> Okay, so since I got the major stinky stuff done in the enclosure, I'm able to leave the studio and finish it out in Chip's permanent home. So we moved Chip into the reptile room temporarily and replaced it with a cabinet stand. And then we moved in the partially built enclosure. as well as recycling his old deluxe stacking spacer. So here is his stack partially completed in our conference room where he will permanently live. One of the reasons why I wanted to move this enclosure before I put all the substrate in is because it was gonna be very heavy. So here I am, I'm sweeping out any of the old substrate that fell off of the tree, might have some silicone attached to it, etc. And then I'm placing in all my new substrate. I did a mix of coconut core, cypress mulch, sphagnum moss, and then a layer of live leaf litter. So now 
I want to put in some of my decor items. So I'm putting in my two caves, a bunch of live plants. So we have some pothos, an inch plant, an umbrella tree, and I believe a peace lily. Then I had to install some branches so that he could get to these other platforms. A thing that I want to make mention, especially when building for a ball python, is they can be a bit of bulldozers. So everything needs to be super secure. So I use zip ties pretty much on everything. Obviously, we need lighting for this enclosure. So I've installed a 36 inch LED plant bulb, as well as a 36 inch 5.0 UVB bulb, and an 80 watt halogen basking bulb. For the bottom corner, I wanted to make sure that he would have UVB light down there as well, so I installed a Reptisun that has the tiny compact fluorescent bulbs. All right, now let's get our doors on. So I am gonna let this enclosure sit for a couple weeks just to air out, make sure that there's no fumes in there that will harm Chip and give the plants time to establish a little bit better. After looking at my enclosure for a week or so, I felt like the top was really missing something, so I ordered a bunch of these faux vines and I really think it pulled the whole thing together. Now it's time to introduce Chip to his brand new home. All right, Mr. Chip, let's see your new house. Where do you want to go? There's four different areas. Let me start up here. How's that? this video and we hope you enjoyed it and we hope that you're inspired to advance your husbandry for your reptile species by providing an enclosure that might be larger than what the recommended or standard size may be. Again, we thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. I'm going to be doing a bunch more builds coming up. You want to say bye Chip? Bye Chip Oh, <laughs>